Welcome to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and today we're going to deal with some work on simplifying polynomials. All right? This 3a squared plus 1 is an example of a polynomial. This 4 plus 2a squared is another example of a polynomial. All right? Now, we're doing some subtraction here, okay? Now, the first thing we need to do in order to do this problem is we got to get rid of the parentheses. The parentheses got to go. All right? The parentheses got to go. Now, there's a specific way that we do that, right? Depending upon what sign is in front of each quantity, right? Now, when I say quantity, what am I talking about? Anything inside of a set of parentheses is called a quantity, right? Because it's an amount. This is how much is inside these parentheses. 3a squared plus 1 represents an amount of something. We don't know what, and we don't need to know for the purposes of doing this problem, but it represents an amount of something. Inside of these parentheses, we have a quantity of 4 plus 2a squared, right? Now, you look at the parentheses and you say, okay, well, boom, what sign is in front of it? Now, in front of this set of parentheses, there's no sign. When there's no sign, we, re we, we recognize that as being positive, right? So we say there's an invisible plus sign in front because there's no sign in front. Just like this 3 has no sign in front of it. So that means that it's positive because there's an invisible plus sign in front of it, right? This minus sign means something different. It's going to affect everything inside of this quantity differently. But because there's an invisible plus sign in front of the 3a squared plus 1 quantity, all we got to do is just drop the parentheses. So when it's positive, or when there's an invisible positive sign, or a written positive sign, we just drop the parentheses. That's all we got to do, right? So basically, you just rewrite... 3a squared plus 1, like this, on your paper, just like that. All right? You got 3a squared plus 1, just like that. Now, for this quantity, though, things are a little different because of this minus sign. This minus sign changes everything. This minus sign is basically an abbreviation for the number negative 1. And what this minus sign really means is you're taking negative 1, and you're going to multiply it by 4, and you take the negative 1, and you're going to also multiply it by 2a squared, right? And your products would be negative 4 and negative 2a squared. Now, the way I usually teach this is I just tell students, when you see a minus sign, everything inside the parentheses after that minus sign, after that, in, the inside that immediate set of parentheses, becomes the opposite sign or the opposite term. So this 4 turns into a negative 4. This 2a squared turns into a negative 2a squared. So when I drop the parentheses for that part, I'm going to write minus 4, and I'm going to write minus 2a squared. Now, I did my first step. My parentheses are gone. They're out the way. All right? That's my first step. I need to get rid of my parentheses, just like in a, when solving an equation. If you are given a, an equation, a linear equation to solve, and there are parentheses inside of it, you got to distribute, you got to divide, you got to do something, but you want to get rid of those parentheses in order to make the equation simpler so then you can end up knowing what x equals or what y equals or what b equals or a equals or whatever, right? So now, my first step is good. I'm done. I got rid of my parentheses. I finished my first step. My next step in order to simplify is to do something called combine like terms. Combine like terms. All right? Combine like terms. Now, first of all, we need to know what are like terms. What are they? For one thing, all numbers are like terms, all regular numbers. Whether the number is positive, whether the number is negative, whether it's a decimal, a fraction, whether it's a mixed number, those are all like terms. Right? So what I want to do is I want to label some of my like terms. Let me grab another color, right? Grab this blue joint, right? So I'm going to label my numbers, right? So I see a 1 and I see a negative 4. Those are like terms because they're numbers, right? It don't matter that this is positive and this is negative. They're still numbers. If one was a decimal and the other wasn't, they'd still be like terms. Um, fractions and decimals are like terms. Regular numbers, positive or negative, decimals, fractions are all like terms, all right? So the 1 and the negative 4, we're going to combine those in a minute. Now, what else are like terms? Okay, 
variables that have the same exponent. And it don't matter what the coefficient is for real. It don't matter. This is a variable, A, exponent 2. This is a variable, A, exponent 2. That means these are like terms. Now, don't look at this problem and say, well, oh, well, how is how is uh, negative 2A squared and 3A squared a like term? How are they like terms if that's a 3 and that's a negative 2? They still like terms. All this 3 does is tell you how many A squareds you have here. All this negative 2 does is tell you how many A squareds you have here. Remember, like terms in terms of a variable, variables with the same exponent are like terms. Regular numbers are like terms. So what I do is I like to label my problems. So I might draw a circle around these to show that, okay, the underlines go together and the circles go together. The underlines go together and the circles go together. Now, when I simplify and I actually do the combination, combining like terms is really just addition and subtraction. But when I simplify, what I do is I combine, I'm going to put the variables first. So I'm going to do 3a squared minus 2a squared. So really, I'm just doing 3 minus 2. And I know from elementary school that 3 minus 2 is 1. So that means I have 1a squared. 3a squared minus 2a squared is 1a squared. So that leaves me with this. a squared, right? And then I have 1, positive 1 minus 4. Now, you got to know how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers. You got to know that when you, when you see 1 minus 4, that's the same thing as starting at positive 1 on the number line, right? And then moving to the left, four spaces. Now, how do I know to move to the left? Because I'm doing subtraction. Subtraction tells me to move to the left on a number line. So 1 minus 4, four spaces to the left, I end up at the number negative 3. A squared minus 3. And there's nothing else for me to do. I combined all my like terms. I can't combine a squared with negative 3 because that's a variable and that's a number. I could multiply or divide these, but I can't add or subtract them. And that's a minus sign, which indicates subtraction. So that means this is my final answer. a squared minus 3. All right? a squared minus 3. All right, let's do another one real fast. Let's do one with addition, just so you see what it looks like. This was a subtraction problem. Let's do one with addition. Now, this one's going to be a little longer. Our quantities are bigger. But that's cool, too, because we need to have experience with how to do these types of problems also. All right, so let's say we have, oh, that's not good. Let's get that out of here. Yeah, reliable markers. Here we go. Hey, fresh boy. All right, so we got 9R to the third plus 5R squared plus 11R plus negative 2 r to the third plus 9 r minus 8 r squared. All right, we're going to simplify this. This quantity plus that quantity. Now we're doing addition. In the last one, we're doing multiplication. So what did I tell you? In terms of getting rid of the parentheses, which is our first step, we got to get rid of the parentheses. We look at what sign is in front of the quantity, in front of the parentheses. So this is the first quantity, so there's no sign written in front of that. There's an invisible plus sign. Think of it, think of it as an invisible plus sign. If there's an invisible plus sign, then we treat it like a plus sign. So we just drop the parentheses. We just drop them. We don't change nothing inside the quantity. We just drop the parentheses. So this becomes 9r to the third plus 5r squared plus 11r. Here go a plus sign right here, too. And what happens when we have a plus sign in front of the quantity? Nothing inside changes. Everything stays the same. So this still is going to be minus 2r to the third. This still is going to be plus 9r. This still is going to be minus 8r squared. Right? So now we did our first step. We got rid of the parentheses. Now, after we got rid of the parentheses, now what we got to do is look for like terms. We first look for the like terms, and then we're going to combine them. Grab some green. 
Now, I see a 9R to the third right here. Now, my question is, are there any other R to the third terms? There go one right there. So what I do is I'm going to underline these, and you can use any symbols you want. You can draw a box around your terms, circles around your terms, check mark over top of your terms, underline your terms, whatever you want to do, as long as you identify what's like, what's alike. All right? I think that's All right, so I got my R cube terms, you know, identified. Now I see a 5R to the second, right? So we got 5R to the second. Is there another 5R? Is another R to the second term? Yes, right here. I got 5R to the seconds right here. I got negative 8R to the seconds over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box around this. And it's not mandatory what symbols you use. Use whatever symbols you want. If you don't want to use symbols, you don't have to. But I think things are going to look a little crowded and crazy, you know. But anyway, then I see an 11R. So I got an 11R right here, and I got a 9R right here. I'm going to put a check mark on top of those. Now, here's one thing you need to understand. Here's a caveat, right? You need to understand that every term won't always have a like term. Every term won't always have another term like it to match up with. And that's cool, too. That term will still be included in the final answer. It just so happened that in this particular problem, everything matched up with something. R cubed matched up with that R cubed. R squared matched up with that R squared. This R matched up with that R. That's not always going to happen, though. Sometimes terms will be on their own. Sometimes you might have three terms that match up. And everything else only has two terms that match up. That can happen, too. All right? Just be prepared for that when you see the example. Now, so now I'm going to do my R cubed first because that's my biggest exponent. I usually like to start with my, with my biggest exponent. So I got 9 and negative 2. So I do 9 take away 2. 9 take away 2 is 7. Right? So since 9 take away 2 is 7, now I got 7 r to the third. I'm combining like terms now. I'm combining like terms. When you was in elementary school and you was doing 3 plus 3, you were combining like terms. So that when you get to algebra and you start to see this language combine like terms, don't act like it's all crazy. Don't get confused. Don't get intimidated. You've been doing this your whole life. Three plus three is combining like terms. Three and three. That's all it is. Now look at your R squared terms. I got five right here and I got negative eight right here. So I know five minus eight. Start at five on the number line. Go eight spaces to the left. You end up at negative three. So that's minus three R squared. Then I got my R's, 11R and 9R. 11R plus 9R is 20R because 11 plus 9 is 20. So now I got plus 20R. Now, I got rid of my parentheses and I combined my like terms. And I'm done. It's nothing else to do, right? Nothing else to do. We can't combine these because that's R to the third. That's R to the second. And that's R to the first, for real, for real. When there's no exponent written, you know that that has an exponent of 1, an invisible exponent of 1. All right? So this is our final answer. All right? So now, that's just a little bit today, a couple examples on how to simplify polynomials through addition and subtraction. Thank you for tuning in. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos on how to do math the easy way, how to do algebra the easy way. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Peace, and thank you for tuning in.